Today, we're talking about the single most important aspect to scoping a penetration test correctly. I'm Alex, I'm a hacker and an information security geek. And on this channel, we explore ways how we can look at the world through the lens of an attacker, become more knowledgeable, more productive, and overall, happier hackers. When I first started penetration testing, almost as a sign of pride, I only asked for IP addresses. I would tell the client, only send me the IP addresses. I am so smart, all I need is the IP addresses. I was doing my clients a giant disservice and I didn't really know why. I thought I was just delivering an easier kickoff call by only asking for IP addresses. Over the years, I did improve my scoping by starting to ask framework questions, even though it wasn't really the best way and not the way I do it now. Framework questions like, do you have to be PCI compliant? Because if you have to be PCI compliant, I then have to do ingress and egress testing on their fire internal and external firewalls between their cardholder environment, so like their CDE, they call it. Or I'd ask questions like, are you following NIST or cybersecurity framework, which have different frameworks? Or do you adhere to the MITRE ATT&CK framework and what aspects do you do of that? I'd ask a lot of framework questions which they either didn't know or they would look it up in their policy because they might not be following it. While framework questions are great and they do give information, they're still not the best way to do scoping. And it took a while for me to really get my head wrapped around the best way. And it was answering the universal question, which was, why? Why are you doing a penetration test? And right when I started asking the question, why? That's when so much information started coming in and I got like truly a targeted test. Why are you doing a penetration test? We're doing a penetration test because it's an annual assessment. Oh, okay, so they do this every single year, so they shouldn't have any low-hanging fruit. Not saying I wouldn't look for it, but just that I know what to expect. Or another answer I often got was, we just got hacked. How? We got hacked because they found a weak account. We got hacked because they found an insecurity that we didn't know we had. We got hacked because they got into an IP address we didn't know we owned. Every one of the how, why, or what questions gives a tremendous amount of insight on how to tune your testing. For example, if they did get breached by an account being guessed, not only do I know, oh, they don't have two-factor enabled, but I know immediately I should be searching the deep, dark public web for any accounts that were breached through LinkedIn or through third-party sites. Secondly, if I do find those, it leads me down another path. Additionally, I should be password spraying. If they said, oh, we have a weak patch on a Linux system and that's how they got in, all of a sudden I know, oh, they might have poor patch management or poor third-party patch management. So it gives me so much ability to tune the test. The other thing I've often got out of why questions are things like, oh, we're doing this assessment because we just moved over to AWS or Azure. Oh my goodness, Azure gives so much insight because right when I find out, oh, they moved to Azure, they probably moved their Active Directory up there, which means a lot of accounts that they never really thought were vulnerable are now exposed to the internet through Office 365. The second main question I ask is, what do you want in the report? The report is the main deliverable from a penetration test, and it's more important than the testing because it's really all they get at the end of the day. By asking what the client wants, I'm able to tune the report specific to their need. Now, I don't like withhold information because they want it done a certain way, but what I do is if they need it for NIST compliance, I'll list off the individual controls, which I can satiate by doing a penetration test. If they want PCI, great. I can refer to PCI DSS and the controls I satiate within PCI because you can deliver on the exact report format they want to present it to executives or technical staff or for them to gain the information they need to improve their network, they're going to keep coming back. It's kind of like the 101 sales technique where give the client what they actually asked for and not what you want. So while I still ask the clients for IP addresses, I'm now asking them a lot more questions, which improves my testing and improves the deliverable. The hardest part about this technique is really two things. One, knowing what questions you should be asking as the follow-up questions. And the second one is knowing when you have to stop. There is a hard cutoff where the client starts to get annoyed. And moreover, and you ask too many questions, it starts feeling like you're not the expert, even though you are using them to scope the assessment. At a certain point, you gotta stop. And I think it's about the five minute mark. It's not a hard and fast rule, but kickoff calls should be short, sweet, and simple because most other testing firms are saying, we just need the IP addresses. 
they're not asking these questions, even though the client gets a better result. This technique does take a little bit of time to figure it out. It is stressful. That's why I read fiction. And that's why you should go check out the best hacker fiction book of all time. I made a video. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. That was a corny transition, I know, but it's still an awesome book.